Today I wanted to just show you some tools and examples of creative strategies I hope will inspire you and give you some ideas um, maybe you can implement. Um, at the moment, we are in a technological adolescence, I would say. There was an article in the New York Times just over um, New Year's, maybe some of you saw, talking about um, the CES conference this year, uh, about self-driving cars, about virtual reality, um, and how these technologies are so important and they are going to change our, our, our environment in so many profound ways, but we're not quite there. They're not quite driving. Um, the virtual reality environment is still very much in development, even though there's a lot of exciting stuff. So um, just keep that in mind when you are um, looking at this, that, that we're sort of in a period where we're in a transition and also tech is always evolving. So you're, you're always looking for new ideas. Um, I wanted to just tell you a little bit about myself and my company called 21C Media Group. Um, we have been in business for 16 years, so the same age as, uh, uh, as this organization, which is great. And um, we uh, partner with uh, institutions, media companies, individual performers. Um, we've really done all kinds of work in arts in our 16 years. Um, this is just a little bit about what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I broke the presentation into a few areas, telling your story, amplifying the live experience and the importance of being there. Uh, sharing the experience post-event, cultivating uh, the online audience um, with, with live in the moment and on demand, and expanding the audience using digital tools. Um, sometimes it's the simple tools in a new application that can make something entirely new and novel. Uh, I want to just show you something that uh, happened in our field recently. Uh, that actually was just the use of a GoPro camera on a trombone. This is the second trombonist of the New York Philharmonic. I mean, you know what GoPros are, are not expensive. Uh, and this is just something funny 
that this guy did. But actually, it highlighted and, and, and not as popular an orchestral instrument. And it got so many views. It got 585,000 views when I looked yesterday. Uh, and Rachel Maddow picked it up and you know put it on her show and tried playing the trombone. And um, in general, it just became something that was, was very celebrated uh, in the field. Um, this is... Uh, just a photo from the YouTube Symphony Orchestra. Throughout the presentation, I have little bits uh, from a project that I did with uh, Google and YouTube twice, 2009 and 2011. And there's a lot of learning um, for the arts from, from that project that I'd love to try to pass on to you um, in, in various different ways. Um, this image is, is just from the, the online mm -hmm. auditions and mm -hmm. really was important in uh, letting people who were thinking about auditioning for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra, which at the time was one of the first opportunities for online auditions. It was inspiring that this guy was just recording uh, into a computer from his dorm room. Uh, and I think that it set the tone mm -hmm. for people feeling like they could do it too. Uh, the online community in general likes to see process and you know this is a process shot and it can heighten uh, the effect of the, the final result. Uh, I also find that spontaneity and humor has been a great thing in our, our field in classical music. We need much more of this kind of what I call man bites dog stories um, to be playful based on your brand values. Um, this shot of Yo-Yo Ma on the floor of the bathroom with a wombat uh, was a completely random occurrence at a, at a benefit in Chicago. I think there were some people from, from the zoo in Chicago and they brought this wombat and you know, this, this picture of somebody like Yo-Yo on the floor um, made a big impression. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with Anna Trebko. She's a major metropolitan opera soprano and I think just the idea that she's you know, a great singer who's gracing the stages of, of the Met, you know, screaming in a snowstorm in a bathing suit made this, uh, this photo go viral. So sometimes um, it's just doing the, the unexpected and doing something funny. You have to wonder what Anna Nishapko was doing in a bathing suit uh, on a balcony in, in, in the snow. Um, sometimes going behind the scenes and telling your uh, story, finding the right story, can be incredibly effective. Um, this is a little piece that was also done for the YouTube Symphony. What we did in, once the uh, musicians were selected from about 70 countries and were going to be brought to Carnegie Hall or the Sydney Opera House is pick a few of them and send a videographer to do a little background story on them. Um, and we found that this one in particular was very useful in terms of the power of YouTube um, to help young musicians. Mi papá siempre apostó todo a nosotros. Estábamos viviendo en, en Ucrania, cerca de Chernobyl. Yo me estaba enfermando mucho, mi papá también, el clima no nos sentaba bien, entonces decidimos hacer un cambio. Un gran cambio que nos cambió la vida. Ir a otro mundo prácticamente, estar en Argentina. Empecé a tocar con mi mamá. Yo no voy a ninguna escuela de música, practico con mi mamá, con mi mamá. Pero también el maestro tiene límites. Uno no puede aprender más que, que, que el maestro, a menos que se salga de esos límites. ¿Con quién voy a estudiar? Pongo todo, toda mi carrera en manos de, de Internet. Son como maestros, músicos que ya no viven, pero que dejaron, dejaron obras grabadas todavía capaz en blanco y negro. Aprendo con ellos. Trato de incorporar de cada uno un poco a mi propia interpretación. Yo cuando aprendo una obra nueva, yo la posteo a YouTube. 
Me gustaría ser grande, eso. Que la gente me conozca, que sepa quién soy, que sepa lo que hago y que me aprecie. The community of not just YouTube users, but also um, people who were thinking about at the time uploading serious content and whether it actually had value. In addition to these kind of in-depth profiles, um, cultivating relationships with celebrities, um, both large and small, can help build visibility, interest, and especially uh, is useful if they'll tag, post, and retweet for you or with you. Um, uh, sometimes the celebrities, of course, will appear at events. We're all trying to get that to happen. Sometimes they'll make videos, they'll host. Um, but sometimes they appear because they actually genuinely love and are enthusiastic about the work that you do. Um, I don't know if anyone's been following the, the Bulls. Uh, Paul Gazol, am I saying his name correctly? He's, he's been attending the Lyric Opera of Chicago. <coughs> Uh, recently, and they've really like adapted him at Lyric Opera, and they have have pictures of him with all the singers, and um, have really invited all the bulls to 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 come to the Chicago Lyric. So if something like that happens to you, of course you jump on it. Taylor Swift has also given a couple of major donations to symphony orchestras, um, which people have been very happy to see from from a pop star. She gave to the Nashville Symphony and also to the Seattle Symphony. Uh, some major gifts. Uh, finding and cultivating these in-house experts can also be useful. Uh, not only has Alec Baldwin um, been uh, a nice and visible presence uh, as, a, as an audio host of the New York Philharmonic broadcasts, but he also very frequently attends concerts and um, will, will go to dinners and, and do a lot to sort of help cultivate new board members and has just generally been extremely helpful and accommodating at um, the New York Philharmonic. The other guy you may not know, his name is Ian and he has a YouTube channel that's very popular in New York called Ian Loves Theater. Um, he's an unlikely spokesperson but now he's one of the most sought after uh, celebrities in New York. I will just play you a little bit of this Joshua Bell review he did. He usually covers theater, but he does go to opera, and sometimes he goes to opera. Hi, this is Ian, and tonight I'm switching out and saw a concert. I saw Joshua Bell in concert at Carnegie Hall. And let me tell you, seeing him up there on the stage was like seeing a ballerina doing the best ballerina ever doing what they do. Uh, like seeing an awesome sushi maker make sushi. It's like seeing him do what he can do. And he's probably the best violin player ever. And it was an honor to see him up there on stage. And I just need to say, uh, first of all, it was cold outside and raining. So inside, it felt so warm and snuggly. And also, it was the exact opposite of feeling loneliness. Everyone was around me. That is such a great feeling. You know what? I just have to leave you with this. Carnegie Hall, happy birthday. Also, Mr. Joshua Bell, thank you so much. You were awesome. Thank you to the piano player and the page turner and everyone. I think you should go see Mr. Joshua Bell in concert at Carnegie Hall. Bye. So this is a simple but effective strategy from the Metropolitan Opera. Um, what they like to do uh, with Last Night at the Met is to just send some people around with, with cameras uh, and capture their audience members. Uh, of course, they ask for permission. This is something that, that I think any, anyone could do to try to highlight the fans that you would like to be seen as having come to your organization or attend your organization. Um, this is a, a cute little girl, um, but this is also a way that they connect with the fashion community. Um, they tag what dresses people are wearing, 
uh, when people are, are very well dressed, like this older couple, um, they, people like to see themselves on Instagram. So they'll, they'll look at these, um, they'll, they'll repost, they will um, tag their, they'll send this off to their friends and they'll, they'll tag um, relevant information. <clears throat> it's also a way to show that celebrities have attended your events. Um, this is Anna Nechubko, the one who uh, was in the snow. If you don't recognize her, she's now <laughs> fully, fully dressed with a, with a blue fur. Um, just a couple of images uh, of well-dressed people and also just shows you the experience of what it is like inside the opera house for people who uh, may not have been there before and are thinking about coming. <coughs> Taking the experience of capturing what happens inside your space a step further I brought this prop, which I think will work without audio, from the Brooklyn Academy of Music. This was a fly-in piece for a Swan Lake that they did a few years ago. Um, what they did is put this in the program, and then they had um, some limited edition in posters that were available for the best Instagram posts that they, they encouraged people to, to make inside the house, and also when they got home. Uh, and they just had some, some advertising in, in the lobby uh, to tell you what to do. And here are some examples of uh, audience members who were having fun with it. They also got the dancers and um, the artists participating in the show to sort of get the Instagram going. Um, and then people, of course, you know, we have to have at least one cat image in this talk about uh, online. So uh, one picture of a cat. People had fun with these at home, too. So this is just a simple and effective uh, tool. They actually got many posts out of this. And they, sometimes you can actually make the, make the news if you get enough um, participation from your audience. Another important trend uh, has been sharing with your virtual audience in real time. Uh, what this is, I'm about to show you, is something called Facebook Mentions. Uh, Facebook Mentions is a live webcasting uh, app that you can use with Facebook. You may also be familiar with Periscope on Twitter. Uh, what's, what's nice about these is that you can pre-promote uh, the ability for your talent to interact with the audience and help build your audience. This particular um, Facebook mention uh, ha features Placido Domingo, and I don't know if any of you are, are, have followed this, but he recently had gallbladder surgery. He just turned 75. He's an older guy now, um, still in good health and still singing well, but his audience is ever more concerned that each time He's, they hear that he has some health problem that he's not going to recover quickly. So what we used Facebook mentions for in this particular case was to show immediately after he was back up from his surgery that he was alive and well and he was fine. So here's just a little clip from this. Pues como perdí un poquito de peso. Ah, well, dear friends, I am very happy, you know, after the after the operation has been my first performance. So I feel uh, with a lot of energy, I want I you to strong. just understand that and this happened so like at 11 o'clock at night nice after a Metropolitan yeah, Opera show. Well. Um, and he and is I, greeting his fans that. now, saying, hi, I'm fine, thanks for your concern, thanks for your well wishes. And I think particularly for those of you who work with dancers or um, people who are maybe vulnerable um, that your audience follows, this is a really great and quick way to show that they're like back in action. Um, and of course you can do a lot of other stuff, but he, um, this, this actually got a lot of follows. And one of the advantages of Facebook mentions 
uh, is that Facebook is really trying to promote mentions, and they will actually do free promotion for you uh, to all of your your base on Facebook if you start to use this app. In, o in order to do this, uh, you have to have a verified page, however. So if you don't have a verified page, that's the step you have to take first. You need a little check next to your organization. Uh, you do not need that for Periscope, by the way. Uh, this is an example of bringing your art to audiences who might not otherwise find it, but this is done in a very novel way. I mean, there are, there are a lot of communities that may not know about or just don't access your physical space. Um, this is a way that the LA Philharmonic brought the Disney Concert Hall, which is a very famous, well-known hall, um, to East LA and other parts of Los Angeles that probably wouldn't think about coming to a concert at Disney Hall. Um, as you can see, the, this was around a Beethoven cycle campaign. They outfitted this big tractor trailer with this concept Van Beethoven, and they fully tricked out the truck so that it looked exactly like Disney Hall inside as much as they could um, with the seats and the wood, um, the look of Disney Hall. But what they did that was really interesting and novel was um, make a deal with Oculus Rift to actually um, create a video that was an immersive 360 experience so that you could actually see what it was like to be inside Disney Hall and feel what it was like, including standing next to Gustavo Dudamel. is the most dramatic beginning mm. in the history of music because it's so direct. Beethoven opens to you the door to go inside of your essence, but to arrive there, you have to go individually. At the LA Phil, we are so proud of this new virtual reality tour, not just because we're using brand new technology in an unprecedented way, but also because we're sharing our music with the community. We are inviting LA to experience classical music in a way it never has before. Virtual reality is a 3D computer-generated environment that the user can enter and explore. So we're really taking an old art form and making it new for a modern audience. We used a spherical camera that's essentially made up of eight modified GoPros to capture the space, to give a sense of presence in and amongst the orchestra that would otherwise not be achievable in real life. And we took that footage and sewed it together to create a stereoscopic 360-degree image. All of this to say, you've never experienced Beethoven's fifth like this before. So what we're doing is we're taking this VR experience, we're loading it into a truck, and we're taking it to arts festivals, to museums, to outdoor events, trying to get it seen by people who might not otherwise get to experience one of our concerts. And it's called Van Beethoven. The CG element brings this piece to the next level. Essentially, we're allowing the user to have a representation of what the music does in, in the mind's eye. I often love watching people go into VR for the first time to watch them take off that headset afterwards and see that sense of wonder on their face is incredible. Wow! <laughs> you can come see us at one of our Van Beethoven tour stops for free or download our app and watch it on your couch anywhere around the world. The LA Phil is always exploring new ideas and making them reality. That's what Van Beethoven is all about. Beethoven was a genius who took music into uncharted territory. We are thrilled to present a glimpse of his groundbreaking Fifth Symphony in a completely new way. You'll have an experience like you've never had before. There are also organizations who are not really hoping to get uh, paying customers with the art that they create. They're doing it for other purposes. This is an example from um, the Paris Opera, which also is the ballet, the ballet and opera. 
It's called uh, Third Stage. They have made a, uh, gotten underwriting from Van Cleef and R. Pals, the jewelers, to create an entire series of videos that is really just that, videos about their art, videos about ballet. For those of you in the ballet community may be aware of this, but uh, for us in the musical community, it was quite inspirational to um, see that they're actually creating this art specifically for a digital audience. They're not trying to get more people to go to the ballet. Um, there are many reasons why this is interesting and attractive, especially if you can get an underwriter. Uh, but this is a sort of new way of thinking about how to engage the digital community. It's not about butts and seats. It's about actually trying to further the art. Uh, I wanted to show you Neftali, which is in the uh, lower left. Um, this is a very, very beautiful, I think, beautifully produced video. Um, and it shows the creative process between an animator and a dancer. Imagination, je peux faire beaucoup de choses. inspired by watching this dancer and is going to create a piece of art out of her moves and you can see how beautifully it's filmed it's very evocative and even if you're not somebody who's an expert in ballet or follows the ballet it's still entertaining and interesting to watch This is partly, the one on the left is actually the form from the, from the Paris Opera uh, where you can sign up. So they do collect information about who watches these videos. 
uh, and they will send out uh, when they have a new one. But they're not really hoping that people are going to come to the Paris Opera because of these videos. Um, here are some reasons that I thought about for creating work for the, this aspirational community, what I call the aspirational <laughs> community. Um, the idea of the high level engagement on a manageable scale is something to just think about, especially for smaller arts organizations. If you would like to partner with somebody who uh, says they don't have the time or can't make the commitment to your organization, it's sort of a small chunk that you can offer them that is manageable. And if you look through the list of who actually participated with uh, the Paris Opera, you'll see that it's a lot of big name filmmakers, maybe people they would have liked to have created sets or choreography, um, but who are probably never going to do that. Uh, they're getting them to do these little films. And maybe a few of them, would, they'll convert uh, and, and actually get those bigger projects. Um, the, the other nice thing is that it's an opportunity for collaboration within the field. You can join with other like-minded arts organizations and create these pieces of art. Uh, of course, there's the educational and humanitarian benefit. All the many people who could see this material, uh, who could learn about it, who, who wouldn't have access uh, unless you created that. Um, and it encourages development of the, the art form. Uh, smaller experiments, stuff that you probably wouldn't put on your stage or exhibit. Uh, and there's also a lot of resource for it, especially if it has an educational uh, bent. It's a new way to find money in some cases. Um, speaking of the aspirational educational, uh, one last point I wanted to make about materials that are useful uh, is that high quality information tends to travel and it tends to stay uh, current. This is actually the contrabassoonist from the London Symphony Orchestra. Um, all, of, all of the members, principal members of the London Symphony Orchestra actually made videos to help the students prepare for the YouTube Symphony Orchestra auditions. Uh, and I've sort of been tracking this guy, Dominic Morgan, because he plays the most unlikely and probably one of the least played, least popular instruments in the orchestra just to see how many people would actually watch a contrabassoon training video. And I have to say, I mean, guess, go ahead, guess, how many do you think views he, he has? 2,000. 2,000, yeah, that's a reasonable view. But actually, he has more than 150,000. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know if there are that many contrabassoonists in the world. But the point of showing him and talking about him is that it's passed around, it's passed around in the community. And the more meaty and more useful the videos are that you create, the more real information that's in them, the longer life they're going to have. So I would not shy away from providing high level technical information and expertise in videos because even if they don't immediately get lots and lots of views, um, over time they will be a resource for people. Uh, and just to contrast, I mean, obviously, he's the contrabassoonist for the more popular instruments like trumpet, violin. They've got over a million views uh, at this point. Some just last thoughts. Um, experiment with new ideas and, and tools all the time. Take the tools that you have, you know, learn to use that iPhone well, because it's amazing what people can do these days just with their phone. Um, harness the creativity of your staff and your audience. Um, one thing that we've learned is that it's very important to bring new people, whether it's interns, fellows, for a couple of months and let them sort of observe your, what you do and, uh, and then interview them about, about growing your audience or how you present. It's amazing what new blood comes up with. 
uh, imitate and adapt the experience of others. I hope you've seen a couple of things here, whether it's Instagram or, or making these little printed things um, that, could, that could be useful for you. Keep your website fresh. It's still the most important um, piece of collateral that you have and the, and the place that people go to the most. Take it with your social media. Um, dedicate, if you can, a small budget to the digital risk taking, you know, whether it's uh, hiring somebody who's an expert graphic designer or uh, somebody who's really good with the camera or special techniques or, or top editing, if you can afford that. And use the many, many free tools that are available to monitor and analyze the results. Do more of what works and stop doing the things that don't work. Thank you.